Albi Pavo has a new addition to a game that's on my radar, and I'd like to tell you about it. Carnival Zombie. This is good for one to six players, ages 12 and up, and it should take you about 45 to 120 minutes to play. Carnival Zombie is a cooperative board game for one to six players, following a group of characters who are fleeing on terra firma from a sinking city overrun by zombies. Players control this party of heroes as they fight their way to one of the possible escape routes out of the city. During the night, they face restless hordes of zombies, while during the day, they recover, move, or search for useful items or survivors. This second edition includes new scenarios that will allow you to face totally new challenges. Some of the features that you will find in this scenario are tutorial scenarios, shorter and harder games, traitor mechanics, scalability, Variable number of characters, one character for each player, etc. Competitive game, more dexterity game, and a night only scenario setting. Finales also can be played as standalone scenarios now. Okay, that is a nice short, tight write up by the publisher about this game, Carnival Zombies. Now, the original Call of the Zombies was on my radar, and I, I never got around to getting it, and part of me is thankful now, <laughs> because the second edition is out, and I don't feel like I, I need to go replace a first edition of something with a new edition. I hate it when that happens. So, uh, there are a few things that pop out at me. Yeah, this is a solo uh, option zombie survival game set in a sinking city. I mean, that's insane. It's in a sinking city. Zombies are all over the place. But but there's not a lot. There's a few out there. Uh, I feel like there, there, there could be a market for more solo playable zombie games. So that's one of the first things that caught my attention. Hey, great. Another solo zombie game and we need more of it. But the whole setting, it's insane. <laughs> now, the fact that uh, some of the scenarios in here are tutorial scenarios, I also think is amazing. I think that's a big plus uh they get a hundred from me on that uh because it's an easier way of teaching someone how to play a game when they have a tutorial setup when they have a, an entire part of the beginning of the game usually the very first scene right where its whole purpose is to teach you how to play while you're playing the game that also gets the game out of the box and onto the table that much faster after you purchase it and get it home <laughs> all right so that's another plus the fact that this edition of the game, as opposed to the first, that, that they have a selling point that it is uh, scalable, that its difficulty and, and time that it's going to take you to play this game is all scalable now, when the first edition of it, it wasn't. Well, if that's true, then that's that's really cool, that's amazing, I love that. Whenever a, a, a gaming company puts into the system a way uh, for the game to, to, to be harder, run longer, run faster, be a little bit easier, uh, it, it really helps you, the player, out to enjoy the game that much more because it gives you a chance to, to learn the game and build up an understanding of strategy for the game and uh, you're probably going to end up playing the game a lot more because of it in a game that has it set up like this. Now, continuing the whole concept of scalability, uh, I, and I, this wasn't connected in any way. I'm making my own connection here, just to let you know. But that's the fact that this that game, uh, unlike the first edition, uh, allegedly, this one has competitive scenarios. So I think right there, a competitive scenario game is always going to, maybe not always make the difficulty of a game harder, but it's going to make the difficulty different. It's a lot different facing someone who's thinking and, and changing tactics on the fly during the course of the game than dealing with one set static AI. And this is the way it does things, and that's the way it is. So that's why I think that this also is a form of scalability in a sense, uh, because it is competitive and you're going to be playing with a human, a real thinking uh, opponent instead of just some AI random drawer of a deck. Now, um, I'm sure this was done for money reasons, but I've noticed in a lot of the photos and write-ups that I've been reading about this, that uh, this game uses a mixture of some really radically cool, awesome looking miniatures in the game, as well as some, some standees that are just magnificent pieces of art in themselves. Uh, and I, 
I'm not opposed. I'm not opposed to that at all. I own and have played and have had fun with other games where they mix and match between miniatures and standees. Yes, part of me wishes that everything was all the same, but but that little part of me uh, is quenched by everything else that I've read and seen about this game in hopes that it's going to be halfway as cool as I'm anticipating it to be, which is but why it's here on the gaming radar, right? <laughs> So with an easy tutorial game setup uh, with, with competitive mode, with cooperative mode, with solo mode, uh, I mean, this game is bringing a lot of different things to bear. A lot of bringing a lot of things down on the on the zombie game, and I'm looking forward to it. And I'm I'm, I'm really getting burned out on zombie games, so I've been getting a lot less each year. Uh, but this one, this one, I'm I'm kind of looking forward to. So uh, go check out some more information and maybe it'll end up on your gaming radar for Carnival Zombie 2nd Edition.